he's running, 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 don't stop. It was a constant back and forth battle with Louisa on this fish. Feels like he's getting tired. I'm getting more line now. And then the fish would wear down and slow down a little bit, and she would pull it back to her. And then it would start running again. Whatever it is, it's big. After loading up with bait, we went to a spot where the captain said we should be able to find some rooster fish. He was right, it didn't take very long after I had those baits in the water, and I had a rooster fish hooked up. Got him. We got a double here, I think, Louise. A whole school of them came through. Little babies, little baby roosters. Look, he's skiing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna let him in the water. <laughs> we might need smaller bait, guys. Look at this, you ever seen a rooster fish ski? This guy's going water skiing here. It wasn't a very big one. I was just kind of reeling it across the surface, the water. I didn't give him a chance to get in the water. Oh, he's jumped. <laughs> Whoop. There he is. And that's what we're out here for, except we're going to want them a little bigger. And as you can see, they got a little mackerel here. We call those Boston mackerel where we're from in Florida. And I'm going to have to get a good hold on this guy here to get that hook out. It's in there good. Let me give him a dunk in the live well. Keep him fresh. It's nice when you have a fish small enough you can just drop them in the live well to keep them alive. Just a little mini rooster fish, but it was still a rooster fish, so it was a good way to start. All right, well, there's the rooster fish I just caught. That circle hook actually destroyed his mouth there and hit a piece of his gill. That's the problem with circle hooks. If they do get in the gill, they don't come out easy like a J hook does, so we're gonna do our best to get them released and have them swim off good. Yep, there he goes. All right. He made it. He's got a little injured gill, but he should be all right. He's swimming good. You can see him right there in that clear water swimming off. Very nice. Shortly after releasing that rooster fish, Louisa ended up hooking into something that was fighting much harder. Had to be a bigger fish. That's a nice fish, Jimmy. Good Woo! job. Keep Welcome it up. Welcome to Mexico. Out of your way, running. you got a good one. Woo. All right, Cap. Come on over here. You got we'll a good switch. one. Good job. Thank you. Finally got one big enough to take the bait down, huh? Yeah. All right. That's exciting. Can't wait to see what it is. Right. Hopefully, it's a big rooster fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, oh it's a tuna. tuna. <laughs> Woo, that's Yellow even better. Tuna. We weren't more than, I don't know, 50, 100 yards from land when we hooked that tuna. It's not every day that you can catch yellowfin tuna inshore when you're fishing for rooster fish. All right. Good fish, Louisa. <laughs> nice fish. Well, I guess that's a bycatch when you're fishing for uh, rooster fish out here. We got the stern of the boat fishing, uh, facing towards the middle of the ocean, but right, right over here, we're about 300 yards from land. Yeah. And that's one plenty big enough to eat right oh, there. Oh yeah, I can't wait. All right, I thought we were catching and releasing everything today, but we'll bring this one home to eat it. That's one of the cool things about fishing in Baja is that you can catch inshore and offshore fish while you're fishing inshore. Very good. All right, well, I'm gonna pull this out and see if he stays still for me. See this circle hook here? Look at that. I didn't even twist it. Did you guys see that? I, I, I just touched it and it fell out of his mouth. That's why you always keep pressure on the line. That was there an awesome is. surprise. I mean, I love rooster fish, but who doesn't love yellowfin tuna, right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Good job, Louisa. Yeah. That's why he was pulling so hard. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Besides the rooster fish and the tuna, we also caught several trigger fish that first day. That's the Ozuri mag minnow. It's the long cast mag minnow. Didn't expect that, but you know what? These guys kill your bait too, so I'm glad we got them, and they make incredible ceviche, so that's what we plan on doing with them. This is the trigger. No matter how hard you pull, no matter what you do, that will not go down at all, unless you hit the trigger, go straight down. Well, they call it a trigger fish, it just locks into place. Knowing that we only had a couple hours of fish this day because of the rain that was coming in, we decided to stay really close and just do some jigging for jacks and to drop some live bait to the bottom in case we could pick up a big snapper or something. 
first bait that I dropped to the bottom, I got hit and it was a pretty good fish. I thought it was a snapper at first, but I wasn't really sure. All right, fish on. Don't know what I got, this one's coming off the bottom. Oh, there it goes. All right. Woo. That's giving me a little bit of a pull. While I was fighting that fish up, Felipe hooked into another fish on the Palomar jig. The setup I'm using too is a 65 pound braid down to a 60 pound Yozuri top knot leader and a 5-0 hook. And the rod and reel combo is an Ocean Max 9 and a Max L Platinum Series jigging rod. So we got plenty of backbone for these fish. And I got color right there. There he is, oh, it's a big one, it's a jack. It's a big old jack. Actually, it's a pink jack. I've caught these quite a few times in Costa Rica and Panama. Ah, there it is, whoo, and that's a pink jack. It's a little different than the Almaco jacks and uh, they don't actually have amber jacks here, they only have Almaco jacks. The Almaco jacks are gray and they have a really long fin that comes out here. As you can see, this is very pink. It's one of the best tasting jacks that you'll catch out here. And we pulled them up off the bottom, as you can see, with a sinker in 400 feet of water. Whoo, what a way to start the day. And as I always say, if you're gonna catch a jack, do it at the beginning of the day because they will wear you down. Look at those pretty colors on them. You won't see those in the States. Immediately after throwing that other jack in the Ingle cooler, I got hooked up right away. I mean, that bait wasn't on the bottom two seconds, and I had another fish coming up. Fish on! Might have another one. We might be in a big school of jacks. Seems to be pretty fired up right now. Ugh. Even though there's no sun this morning, I sure am sweating. Yep, another jack. The pink jacks fight like your typical amberjack would fight. They're a very strong fish. They're a jack, so they will fight from top to bottom. Not quite as big as the last one. This is more the typical size that you'll see the pink jacks. Real pretty fish, man. It's gonna be nice to get into a bunch of these because they are fantastic to eat. One of the best tasting jacks, like I was saying. And they're actually in the rudderfish family, like the banded rudderfish that we have in Florida and the Caribbean and uh, things like that. Very, very similar fish, just no stripes on them in a pink tent. So Louisa's jigging on the left side of the boat, I'm fishing on the bottom on the other side of the boat, and then I hear her say fish on, and now she's hooked up with the Palomar jig. Woo! What we're doing here, we're dropping our Palomar jig all the way to the bottom and just jigging on the bottom because that's where all the fish are. So we don't have to jig it all the way to the top. I see some blue. What do we have here? She gets it closer to the boat and it's another striped bonita. Good job. They're coming in one after another, aren't they? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, fish on, fish on. Got him. Woo! <laughs> we were just in the process of putting the second line out and I'm already hooked up. Oh, they're coming out of the water right behind us. This is insane. What I'm fishing with right here is an Ocean Max 10 by Max L and the Max L Platinum Series jigging rod, which we're not doing jigging right now, but it's a fantastic rod for tuna because it's very lightweight. You can fight a bunch of large fish in on it in the same day without it really wearing you down. And it's rated for 135 pound class, so it's a really tough rod. It wasn't a huge tuna, but you know what? It was a fun sized tuna to catch, and I love catching tuna that size. It's not too small where you're just gonna throw it back or use it for bait, and it's not too big where you're gonna break your back for an hour and a half reeling it in. They're a really fun sized tuna to start the day off with. There it is. All right. <laughs> Good job. We'll bring him over here for the camera to see. Look at that, you see that? Gaffed it, pulled it in the boat. You see that hook anymore? It's out that easy. As soon as that thing felt a little bit of release from the pressure, the hook fell right out of his mouth. Not a real big tuna, but still a great size to eat. Wonderful start to the day. The tuna were biting good, but so were the jacks, and a school at Jack Revals moved in and interrupted our tuna fishing. Got him! Woohoo! Man, two in a row! Golly! This has taken no time at all.
After I caught and released that jack, Louisa ended up hooking into a jack instead of a tuna. So we were sitting in a school of jacks. Woo! The sun is shining and the fish are biting. After messing around with some jacks, Louisa ended up getting another tuna bite. Oh, I got a fish. Fish on. Smaller tuna are a lot of fun as well because you can reel them in one after another without breaking your back like you do on a bigger tuna. Good morning workout. Fish is staying down. This is definitely a bigger fish oh, than the man. other one, for sure. And it's fighting hard, just the way I like it. Nice fish. Nice yellow fin. There you go. Not where I wanted to stick him, but that'll work. Good fight. Look at that hook right in the top of his lip. Yeah. Wow. It's hung in there good. Gosh, that's a hard spot to hook him. There, there it goes. <laughs> good job, Eliza. Thank you. Not a bad fish. Yeah. We're in a school of little footballs here. Yeah, catching yellowfin to the inshore. Heavier than he looks. Oh yeah. So we moved a little bit and uh, Louisa got a hit on the spinning rod. She wasn't really sure what it was at first because it was kind of a lighter hit. How's it feel? Feels good. Definitely not a bonita because it's not like spinning like a bonita everywhere. You got a little bigger, huh? Yeah. Staying down, but it's not doing much. Now he's running, 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 no stop. It was a constant back and forth battle with Louisa on this fish. Feels like he's getting tired. I'm getting more line now. And then the fish would wear down and slow down a little bit and she would pull it back to her. And then it would start running again. Whatever it is, it's big. <laughs> well, it seems like the fish is a little bit tired. Now it's time for me to gain some line. Oh my gosh, it's a big tuna. <gasps> This has to be my biggest tuna on light tackle ever. 30 pound Yozuri top knot leader. This is just incredible. So close. I mean, my heart was beating so fast when I saw that tuna. Woo! I see it, I see it, I see it. That's a big yellowfin tuna made in Mexico. Lift, lift now, lift, 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 lift. Man. Got him! Woo! Ah! <laughs> and that's what she was fighting all that time. Woo! What a monster! Louisa! Oh my gosh! Put a hurting on him. We got it on the Tsunami 6000 shield reel. Pure muscle right here. Yep. Pure muscle. And only 30 pound Yozuri top knot leader. If you notice the teeth in this fish's mouth right here, check these teeth out. One scrape of that leader across those teeth, pop, broken. The leader was stuck in the corner of his mouth where there's no teeth. Perfect. So all we had to do was handle the weight of that fish and that's what we ended up with right there. Exactly what we came for. Yeah. Do not mating Mexico. Exactly. Yeah.